all right let's get into it hello everyone welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be reviewing the invisible life of adi larue by v swap this book has been in my read list for a while and i finally picked it up and i read it in like three days it was a complete bench marathon in my opinion it was a little raw in a non-gory way there were a lot of scenes that were kind of like giving you a sense of dread for the main character and that like made me want to read it more spoiler alert right now because i'm gonna be talking a lot about the plot the book begins with her life in france how simple of a life she used to have back in like the 1700s and then it picks up later in the book so at the beginning you might be like okay, all right well, where's the plot what's gonna happen so essentially she made a mistake and she kind of made a bet with the devil or like a trade with the devil and the devil in here is it's a little abstract it's not the devil like we imagine it it's not the devil like most people imagine it it's like a combination I would not call it a romantic book 100% because the romance in it is not the main story. It obviously makes an appearance, but it's not the main story. The main story is how fucked up her life is. For starters, I'm going to give you a background story for her. She was born in the 1700s and she had a very simple life. She liked drawing, she liked going to the river she like engaged with this old lady at her village and it was like a simple life already destined to end like without major historical events in it but that's not what Addie wanted Addie wanted to do more she wanted more time and she followed the instructions of this old lady that told her like you can pray to like the gods but don't pray to the gods that like come at night which is exactly what she did amazing foreshadowing i guess because <laughs> i could have predicted that at the beginning um but she prayed to the gods that come at dark and the one that came is kind of like the devil or she calls him the darkness in the book but we never actually get a full name until like way later and she essentially made a bargain for her soul because this this creature this um god or spirit collects human souls um one of the things that i didn't like about the book was that we never got a full background on this like creature slash spirit like for an important plot or like an important character in the book we never actually found out why he needs the spirits of humans why does he collect them why is he so obsessed with the spirits and the souls of them so that was kind of a miss in my um opinion which is why i reducted one point from the book because we i just feel like there was more to do there there was more character development to have made after 300 years of like being in this oh no one remembers me i'm lonely no one talks to me i have no one in the world but i go around the world and like enjoy the beauty of humanity essentially after 300 years of that she finally finds someone who can remember her because he's also cursed and then like that's where the story picks up that's where the romantic lead comes like almost at the middle of the book not at the beginning definitely which is something i like because this is not supposed to be a romance book and then after that we get all of our plot and everything just like picks up because at the beginning of the book it goes slow it's a lot of background story a lot of jumps through time we still get jumps through time at the end of the beginning at the end of the middle i mean but not as much as at the beginning and at the beginning it's all around building her character which is probably why i believe this book is so praised because it makes you feel things for the main character a lot uh v swap is an amazing writer even if she has plot holes like every other author you can you can really connect with the characters that she makes important in this story because she makes you feel things which is the whole point of a book now i'm gonna talk about the things i didn't like Apart from the lack of character development for Luke, who's the villain or the devil or however you call it, um, I also didn't like how this book spans over 300 years and she's like in Europe most of the time, yet she didn't 
do anything during one of the greatest historical events, World War I, World War II, the concentration camps, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, uh, a lot of other things. So a lot of major historical events happen and she's like completely unaffected by them, never brings them up in her present, which, you know, as you might imagine, someone who has lived through those things would definitely talk about them more and would be more present in their personality traits and their character. But in her, she just brushes it off. There's, I think, one scene where she was in like World War II and she almost got incarcerated. But apart from that, we never get to see all of this historical events that happened over 300 years. Like this woman literally saw the beginning of democracy and now it's living through like the, the, the just of it. Just, she never like mentions it, which is fine if you don't want to get historical or political, but then don't make a character that lives 300 years if you don't want to include any of the major historical events that happen through it. Like the Spanish influenza, she never mentions that. Like imagine seeing thousands of people die and like never put it in the book of the person that lived 300 years. I don't know. I'm just saying that the, the brushing off the historical events really made her character lack depth. Now, the things that I did enjoy were the magic rules. I don't know where I saw this, but essentially it was like a tip for writers, tip for readers, but it was about explaining magic in writing and how important it is to write a set of rules and never break them. As if, if you construct a magical world with a set of rules as its base, you shouldn't break them. A great example for this in my brain is Avatar The Last Airbender, even though it's a kids TV show. You always know what the rules are of magic. They're very simple or like bending, my bad. And people barely break them. For example, like when they do break it, they break them within the rules. Like Toph, an earthbender that can like bend metal, but then it's explained why she can bend metal because of the particles of the earth, you know, inside metal. So what I liked about this book was the fact that they barely ever broke the rules of the magic. And when they did with the main romantic lead, they explained why he was an exception and he was an exception within the rules. So if you didn't understand that, it, the reason he could remember her was because he was also a cursed person and his curse kind of like neutralized her curse, which I think it's a genius way to introduce a character with an exception without breaking the, the, the rules of magic under which it was constructed. Now, the ending. A lot of people have talked about how controversial the ending is because maybe she should have ended it earlier maybe the author should have like left somewhere to construct a second book or become a series i think the ending was perfect in my eyes the ending of this book it ended where it should have ended how it should have ended with the explanation i personally needed on how it ended because i wouldn't have catched that um the the fact that she was plotting revenge against the devil afterwards or like in a long term type of thing i wouldn't have realized that that's the point of why she agreed to the things she agreed later so the ending of this book in my opinion was the perfect type of ending for this type of story and specifically for this type of character because addy is shown to be a clever character she's not someone that needs rescuing she's not someone that needs guidance. She's someone that figures things out on her own. And then she's someone that can plot long-term. And if she has been able to, you know, trick the devil for 300 years, essentially, or take him off at least, then it's obvious that she can take him down eventually after more years of experience and development. Another thing I liked was the curse itself. I think it's an amazing curse because all of us have once thought about it like, oh, what would happen if I could live forever? Like, what would happen if I became a vampire? Like, I don't know, but Vampire Diaries or Edward Cullen. Or <laughs> what would happen if, like, I could just travel in time and stuff like that? And this is a perfect example of the pros and cons of living forever and how a curse and a mangling with the devil can end up the wrong way in a paranormal slash magical book so 
I really like the plot in this book. I think there are some things to definitely improve with it, but I'm not a writer, so <laughs> that's why I review books. But yeah, that is all I have for today. I would recommend this book for people that like adventure, for people that like historical fiction, not the best one, and for people that like romance, I say skip it because romance is not the main part. It did make you cry, at, it did make me cry at some point, but uh, definitely not a romance book, more of an adventure kind of like paranormal adventure thing. It definitely took me for a trip back and forth because I finished it in like three days. I was very obsessed with it because there was a point where it picked up and I just needed to know how it ended, what was gonna happen, everything. Yeah, so like and subscribe if you liked this video and if you want to see more content like this, just go to my YouTube channel or leave some ideas on the comments.